For the following exercises, evaluate the expressions writing the result as a simplified complex number. You got it. Okay, so we're almost at the tail end of this complex number playlist. So if you guys aren't on the playlist and you want to see all the complex number, the imaginary number videos that we've done, you can click on the playlist. The link is in the description for that, as well as all of our other math playlists. If you want to go back and see what we've done, we've got everything covered for you guys. So without further ado, let's get down to business. We need to simplify this whole mess. Right, we need to simplify 3 plus 2i divided by 2 plus i, and then it's all being added to 4 plus 3i. So I'm looking at this from a simplifying standpoint, and I, and I want to see what am I going to do first, right? I know, according to PEMDAS, that multiplication and division, so dividing, comes first before I add this stuff out. So I know that I have to work with this first, right? And I know from all the, the, the questions that we've done that the problem arises here in which your I value, your imaginary component can never be in the denominator. So I know that I'm probably going to have to start somewhere by working on this denominator and trying to get rid of I in that denominator. So how are we going to do that? Well, we know that we will always just multiply by the opposite of what's being done here. So if I'm doing two plus I, I need to multiply by two minus I in order to get rid of that i value. But I got to be fair. If I multiply the denominator by that number, I have to multiply the numerator as well. And this is why we can multiply things randomly out of thin air, because this would just simplify to 1. So in really, in retrospect, we're just multiplying by 1, but we can actually do the math to get rid of the i value. So it looks like I have now two things that I have to multiply. I need to multiply the top, right, by this, and I need to multiply the denominator as well. It doesn't matter which one you do first. Uh, you just got to do one and then do the other. Let's work on the de denominator first because that was the whole idea why we had to do this mess because we want to get rid of the denominator, the I and the denominator. So essentially, you have these two parentheses being multiplied by each other. So I have 2 minus i, and you know what? Let me start up here, because I'm probably going to need a lot of room. There's been a lot of work being done for the past couple of questions. These are, these are hardcore. So 2 plus i, OK. So I have 2 minus i times 2 plus i. And we've seen this idea tons of times, right? The 2 has to be multiplied by that first guy, and then he wants to be multiplied by the second term, but then you got to be fair. If you're going to multiply the 2, you got to multiply by the negative i, by the 2 and the i. So there's four multiplying steps that you have to do. Let's get started. 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times i is a positive 2i, so plus 2i. Then if I'm moving on to the blues, negative i times 2 is negative 2i. And then negative i times i is a negative i squared. You had two i's, so you represent that by a 2. OK, clean this up, right? I have two variables with the i value in it. 2 minus 2, right? And I'm taking it from here. 2 minus 2 is, they cancel, right? It equals 0. So now you're left with 4 minus i squared. Now, this is all fine and dandy, but, you know, simplified complex notation tells me that I'm only allowed to have an i in my answer, right? I can't have i squared or i cubed or i to the fourth, so I need to get rid of this. But we can get to that answer by saying, well, what does i really mean? 
i is the square root of negative 1. It's a square root of a negative number, right? If we plug in a square root in our calculator of a negative value, the calculator is going to decompost and break up. <laughs> Maybe not, but it'll, it'll just give you an error, right? If you put in a square root of negative 25, the calculator is going to say, uh -uh, error, because it's imaginary. It's not real. It has I values to it. It's an imaginary world. So if we're trying to solve for an I squared, that means that I just have this, the I value, which is this, squared. So this is just saying that I have the square root of negative 1 squared. And what is a square root being squared? They're opposites of each other, so they get canceled. So that's your answer. An I squared always equals negative 1. So that's what's going on here. So this really equals just a negative 1. So this would be 4 minus a negative 1. 4 minus a negative 1, keep change, change. This is just a 5. So that means that the answer, actually, I don't want to say that. I will just say that this whole thing, if I break this down, right? Because that's what we're doing, this multiplied by this. The denominator for the whole thing is 5, right? Now we have to do the work to do the numerator. And can you guys see that there's, there was I's here, now there's no more I's, and that was the problem. So we fix the problem. Now we just have to do the numerator. So that's 2 minus I times 3 plus 2I. And the same exact idea is happening here. I have to multiply the 2 by the 3 and the 2i. And then I have to multiply the negative i by the 3 and the 2i. So four steps again. Let's give it a shot. 2 times 3 is 6. 2 times a 2i is a... Whoop, plus 4i. Negative i times 3 is a negative 3i. Negative i times 2i is a negative 2i squared. Let's clean this up. 4i minus 3. 4 minus 3 is just 1. So this would work out to being 6 plus, you could say 1i, or you can just say i minus 2i squared. Okay, well, we run into the same problem as last time. I can't have any i squareds, but we now know that i squared just equals a negative 1. So this would be equal to 6 plus i minus 2 times a negative 1. Negative 2 times a negative 1 is a positive 2, so I can just erase this and say this is plus 2. 6 plus 2 is 8, and then we just have that i at the end. So that's the ending for this. This is now the, the new numerator. So this would be 8 plus i. So this whole thing simplified down to one single fraction, 8 plus i over 5. Now, we like to get this even more broken down into real and imaginary components. Remember, if you have multiple things in the numerator divided by just one single denominator, you can break them into parts by their addition or subtraction signs. So this would technically be 8 over 5, so 8 divided by 5, plus, plus, the i over 5. And now I have that nice and simple. I have a real component here. I have an imaginary component here. This would be the same thing as saying, you know, 1 over 5 times i. It does not matter. Um, I'll probably use the other one, though, because we still have to plus this whole jazz. So let's just put this into context. Okay, so this is the answer that we just found. However, we're not done. We just did this part. But now we have to do 8 
over 5 plus i over 5 plus parenthesis 4 plus 3i. Now, I put the parenthesis there because there was parentheses here. However, when you're just adding, you don't need parentheses, right? Because you're not multiplying, so you don't have to play fair. You can just say, okay, I'm going to add these two. So, goodbye. I don't need those parentheses. They just put those parentheses there to probably trick you. But now we have like terms, right? I have an 8 over 5. That's a real component. And I'm going to add that with the real component on the other side, which is a 4. And then I'm going to add together the imaginary components. I have an I over here, and I need to add that with an I over here. Notice how I'm saying adding, and I'm not um, multiplying. I'm not playing fair. I don't have to take this 8 over 5 and do it to both of them. I can't, because adding and subtracting, you can only add and subtract like terms. So let's take this in two steps. I have an 8 over 5, and I need to add 4. Now, there's so many ways to do this, right? You can use this. You could plug this into the calculator. Um, you could make this into a fraction, um, a decimal, and then put it into the calculator. It doesn't matter to me. I like to work with fractions. I'm probably the only one that likes to work with fractions. So <laughs> I will work with fractions. Uh, we need to find a common denominator, right? So basically, what is the same thing as saying 4, but having a denominator of 5? This was technically 4 over 1, right? So if I multiply by 5 to get the 5 denominator, I got to be fair, I got to multiply by that 5 on the top. So this would be the same thing as saying 20 over 5. And keep in mind, right, it was a plus 4. 20 divided by 5 is a 4. So I can just simplify and say, okay, I'm not adding 4, I'm adding 20 over 5. And now we have a nice little fraction, right? When you're adding fractions, remember, you just keep the denominator the same, so just be a 5. And then 8 plus 20 is 28. So this is the answer to the first component. Now we're going to do the same exact idea, but with the i values. I have i over 5 plus, oh, that was an ugly, that was an ugly 5, i over 5 plus 3i. Okay, well, same exact idea. I want to get my common denominator. So remember, this was over 1. And I want to get it into a 5. So I have to multiply by 5 on the bottom. But I got to be fair, I got to multiply by 5 on the top. So this would be the same thing as 5. And then 3 times 5 is 15. So this is 15i. And remember, it just equals 3i. But if I simplify this, it turns into 3i, right? So instead of adding 3i, I will just add 15i over 5. And there's, remember, there's 1i here, right? So common denominator doesn't go anywhere. You're just adding the 1 plus the 15, which is 16i. And there you go. So it's these two components, your real and your imaginary. They're being added together. So your answer would be 28 over 5 plus 16, whoop, plus 16i over 5. And that simplified complex notation, the real value has to come first. The imaginary comes second. But other than that, that's it. And look, I left some space here for the subscribe button. So if you want to subscribe to the channel and tell us that we're doing a good job and helping you guys out with math, you can click the subscribe button. Like the video if it helped you out. Tell me in the comments what you thought. Was this challenging? Was this not? Um, I'd love to hear from you guys. Tell me how you're doing. Um, but other than that, keep studying hard. You guys got this. Um, I'm so proud of you guys. You guys have, we've come a long way. We're already in chapter three. Let's keep going. I'll see you guys all in the next lesson. Have a great day. Bye-bye.